What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Tropical Kool Aid TV back at it again on the video. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm off for the next three days, so I'm probably gonna give you guys back to back videos for Thursday, Friday, and also Saturday. So, coming at y'all with a video today of one of the remastered stories that I have for y'all, which is the time that I got hit by a car. Now, I told the story before, but it's just some things that I didn't tell y'all that I'm going to tell y'all. So, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe to my videos, also my channel. If you find this video very interesting, please leave a like rating and also a comment. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so how this story started was it was originally back in November 2016, a few months after I had graduated from high school. Well, what happened was after I graduated from high school in June, I got a job at McDonald's roughly about seven twenty five an hour. The pay sucked. The people sucked. The boss sucked. The whole entire company sucks. I don't know why people think that McDonald's is such a great company. I mean, I'm tell y'all. From experience, I've worked for McDonald's before. They suck. Don't ever go to them. Don't even ever work for them. I mean, the food could be a little bit amazing. Just a little bit. Not a lot. But don't ever go to them. Don't ever work for them. Because I guarantee you, you're going to be treated like a fucking slave. So, after I quit my job from McDonald's in October. Because, you know, I just literally just got tired of their shit. You know, I just kept got tired of them taking money from my register and I'm having to pay for money that I obviously didn't take. So what happened was a friend called me one night. His name's Dustin. And he told me, he's like, yo, Q, like your wallet is over here at my house. You're going to need to come pick it up. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pick it up in the morning. Well, that day and that night, he had to go and go to a trip to Florida, which he did. He did go. And he told me that I need to go pick up my wallet right now. Now, it's around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, I got off my Xbox around 1, and I went to sleep around 2. He woke me up around 2.30, so I didn't really get much sleep. So what happened was... I told him I was going to go ahead and come on over. I left my phone there like a dumbass at my house. So even if I was to get into trouble or even if I did get hit by a car, I wasn't able to contact anybody. So what happened was I went to the um, I went to his house, got my wallet. And then as I was coming back from his house. I didn't see nothing at all. The street was pitch black dark. And I started to run and get across the street back to my house. And bam, I got hit by a car. Apparently what the cops say is that it's the person's fault, whoever was driving, because whoever was driving didn't put their headlights on. I don't know why the fuck would you drive without your headlights? You know, you could have just either killed somebody or, you know, you could have just done something. So... He, he or she, because they never did tell me who the hell hit me. So he or she hit me. And what happened was I went to the hospital, woke up in the hospital. The doctor told me that I died twice. So I did actually die. Something in my chest was ruptured and it caused me to go in shock. Lucky to be alive. So after that. You know, I told the doctor, I was like, hey, you know, is it possible that I can get in contact with my family? You know, my family doesn't know that I'm here. Is it possible that I can get in contact with them? And he says, yeah, man, no problem. It's, it's totally fine. So what happened was I got in contact with my parents and my mom had told me, she's like, you know, where are you? And what, what sucked is that it was a sun, it was a Saturday. So Sunday was the next day that I had to go to uh, church with them. And she thought that I was just literally just, you know, saying that I don't want to go just because, you know, I was just being a dick about it. But I was actually hurt. So after I had um, went to the, you know, process of getting everything done, I called her and I said, hey, you know. I need to I need to do a couple of things like I need you to come down here. I'm in the hospital. She thought I was kidding. 
I actually wasn't. So what happened was I actually got one of the nurses inside the room with me and I told her, I said, hey, look, can you talk to my mom and tell her that I'm literally in the hospital and that she needs to come and, you know, just to be down here. And she said, yeah, sure. I don't mind doing that. So when she actually came down here, um, she literally burst into dear tears, sorry, tears, didn't expect for her to actually do that, you know, considering the fact that, you know, moms usually don't cry, especially over their black sons. But anyway, enough of that. So after that had happened, she sat down and asked me a couple questions of, you know, how did this happen? Who hit you? And I had to respond with, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. So after I had told her everything that I had told her, the doctor came in and he said, and I quote, he said, well, hello, everybody's doing. And, you know, I'm his surgical doctor. And when he said surgical, I said, wait, surgery. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And he said, well, Mr. Q, you know, you're going to have to get surgery on your hip and pelvis because that's what you broke. And I was like, wait, wait, what? Now, I ain't going to lie to you. I was scared like a little bitch because i never been into surgery before and I didn't want to go into surgery. So he's like, no, no, no. The surgery is completely fine. It's harmless. You won't, you know, even feel a thing. He was like, we're just going to be screwing up uh, some bones inside your body to make sure that it's in place. So I said, OK, sure, fine. So I had to sign off of it, even though I was over the age of 18. You have to sign off on your own papers to make sure the surgery is actually going through. And after the surgery, the doctor told me that I probably won't be able to walk for a while. And that's OK with me, because even though I was at home, you know, I still tried to look for a job. But considering the fact that I was uneligible to work at the time, I really wasn't able to do anything anyway. They gave me pain medication to basically numb the pain. That shit didn't work at all because I was still in pain every night. I mean, some nights I had to go to bed in pain, literally crying because, you know, it hurts so much. There are some nights where I literally didn't even sleep at all. So after that happened, it got to the point where I really got bored and I started doing things for myself. You know, I started getting up and, you know, I started cleaning and stuff like that. And, you know, my mom was just leaving me at home. To just basically do things for myself, you know, I was kind of in a wheelchair, so I don't think that was kind of like the right thing to do. But she said she had errands to run, so I was like, okay, well, go run your errands. I'll be fine here. So one of the things that y'all didn't know about this was that I had got a lot of support from my friends and family across the world as far as like facebook twitter and well i don't have a twitter anymore but as far as facebook instagram snapchat you know they've been hitting me up like hey man look hang in there we got you you know if you need anything let us know so i was getting a lot of support but as far as people who wanted to help me no not so much i probably didn't have a single person that stopped by the house who said hey you know i'll do this for you i'll do that for you no one decided to stop by the house at all um, I was actually talking to a girl at the time and we was almost about to start dating until I got hit by a car and she straight up told me that I don't think that I can date a person in a wheelchair. So she deliberately stopped talking to me all the way. And then it got a lot worse in public to the point where I was so bored that, you know, I went to the mall with my parents and I was rolling in my wheelchair and somehow, some way, these group of girls thought it was funny seeing a guy in a wheelchair. So, I, you know, I rolled over there and I was like, hey, you know, what's so funny? And they said, you know, we never seen a black crippled dude before. And I ain't gonna lie, it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit knowing that people would actually say some shit like that. But I didn't let it affect me at first, but it kind of got to me. When I got home, you know, it, it, it I kind of got a little bit of emotional about it because now that I look this way now and that I have screws in me, you know, now that I, you know, my face is a little bit, it's not messed up. It's just, it has scars and stuff on it now. Uh, my hands got scars and stuff on it as well that I knew I wasn't going to be the same. So I just want to let y'all know that, man, don't let nobody tell y'all that 
you're different from anybody, you know. Everybody has a different type of thing that they like to do, you know. If you like to play basketball, play basketball, you know. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't that you can't accomplish this or accomplish that cuz I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of people here in this world that think that a lot of people can't do anything. And I just want to let y'all know, man, that don't let nobody get to y'all, man. Keep your head up. Keep doing what you're doing. If there's something that you like, be good at it, man. Stay up. This is your boy, Chapel Kool-Aid TV, and I'm out of here. And I'll see y'all in the next one.